Hello everybody. These set of slides will give information for S4 and S5 pupils before making their course choices and will refer to the transition from school to the workplace, college or university. In these slides, I'll refer to the different pathways, the different qualifications, the subject choices you can make, and considerations for pupils when making their choices. Most pupils turn age 16 during the course of S5 and are therefore beyond the age of compulsory schooling. They then have to consider their next steps, which educationalists call pathways. For pupils completing S4 and going into S5, there are four pathways. Pathway 1. Many pupils choose to stay on for S5 and some on to S6. Some have achieved good grades in their NAT 5 and choose to study hires or a foundation apprenticeship at school in order to go on to university or professional training. Some may want to continue to achieve good grades in their National Fives to give themselves greater choices at the end of S5. For pupils currently in S5, you may want to consider why you want to return to school for S6. This should be for study and contribution to school life rather than for a social life or to attend the school prom. Pathway two. Pathway two is to leave school and attend Edinburgh College instead. This allows pupil to study subjects more closely associated to their chosen career. And many pupils prefer to study at college which is often less prescriptive than school life and is also a good transitional experience to the world of work. Pupils can study a range of subjects from hairdressing to police studies, health and social care to civil engineering. Some of these courses provide pathways to university and are particularly useful for pupils who are currently in S5 who've not quite yet achieved the grades for university, but would still aspire to go to university. So completion of some of the two year HND courses at college allows pupils to enter straight into year two at Heriot Watt University or Edinburgh Napier University. For example, the aforementioned civil engineering. Pathway three. Some pupils apply for a modern apprenticeship. These give you the opportunity to earn while you learn with an employer. All modern apprenticeships vary slightly in their ratio to working and learning, and of course, in salary. Vacancies are usually advertised on the Edinburgh Guarantee website. And the school often promotes some of these on the school Twitter, school Twitter account. Pathway four. Some pupils are keen to leave, but aren't quite old enough yet. For these pupils, there is the JET Plus scheme, Job Employment Training Plus scheme. And this is an unpaid extended work experience with some college input. And this lasts until December when most pupils turn 16. Following this, pupils may then apply for work. Or they could apply for the six month skills for work college course. Whether it be school or college, or even a mix of both of these, it's important to understand the suite of qualifications available in Scotland. Many years ago, qualifications were few. 
pupils set standard grades, then maybe hires, then advanced hires, and then move up to a different set of qualifications at colleges and university. Now, across schools, colleges and universities, we have levels which range from level 4 to 13 in the SCQF qualification framework. Within these levels, there are different types of qualifications. For example, at level 6, we have qualifications such as Hire, National Certificate, Professional Development Award and Foundation Apprenticeship. On this slide, I've only placed the ones that are available at school, but more are available. In terms of university, however, some carry different tariff points, different weightings. And so if your child intends to go to university, a careful choice needs to be made. Pupils may then to choose solely hires, and this can be over one year or two years. Your child's pupil support leader will discuss this with them. And indeed, pupil support leaders are happy to chat to parents too about the coursing process and the choices that your child wishes to make. So looking at this slide, when your child returns next session, they may be taking a mix of an NPA, a couple of National Fives, a hire and a foundation apprenticeship, or perhaps they will be taking five hires over one year or two. Foundation apprenticeships. These are quite different from the modern apprenticeships and should not be confused with them. This is a qualification achieved over two years at level six and then at level seven and is broadly equivalent to higher and advanced higher. Pupils attend school in year one, but on a Tuesday and a Thursday afternoon will attend college. In year two, on a Tuesday and Thursday afternoon, there's a placement with an employer. This qualification is accepted by most universities as equivalent to higher and advanced higher. It's important when returning to school and deciding on a career to pause and think about the workplace skill shortages. There are employment shortages, especially in these four key areas, health and social care, education, engineering, and information technology. Consequently, the foundation apprenticeships are designed to be the first stage into one of these career areas and they're available in the following 10 subject areas. If your child is choosing to return to school, these are the subject choices available in school for session 2021 to 2022. Subjects where the class is only taught at level five are in the first row. In the second row, subjects may be taught at both level five and level six. Although in some less popular subjects, this will be a combined class of level five and level six pupils. Some pupils in S6 classes will also be able to undertake advanced hire in the subjects in the green row. Classes in advanced hire are taught for three periods and then the pupils have self-study for a further three periods. Pupils in S6 will also undertake a compulsory qualification, either the SQA level six qualification in leadership or the Pope Benedict Caritas Award. Both these qualifications develop the young person's leadership and project management skills 
whilst contributing to the wider life of the school and make a useful addition to a child's CV or in their personal statement if applying to college and university. When discussing your child's career aspirations, it's important to consider what they're good at, where the employment shortages are, what qualifications are needed, and your child's experience and their ability in achieving these qualifications. An example would be if your child has achieved national fours in S4, a career in medicine as a doctor is not always advisable. There are many other qualifications and careers in the field of medicine which are achievable and there are even different routes into medicine which can be studied at college. If university is your child's preferred pathway, checking the qualifications needed on the college or university website is essential. If your child has chosen to return to school for S5 or S6, it's important to consider the following. Are you really making the right decision to return? Have you thought about your career route and what is needed to achieve this? Are your choices realistic? Have you researched what you need? Have you looked at several university prospectuses and at the Edinburgh College prospectus? A useful tool to prepare for this is on the Edinburgh College website. It's called the Career Coach. Here, your child can undertake a series of questions and based on these questions, uh, this website will suggest several career areas and the routes that your child needs to follow in order to achieve uh, entrance into that career. If you're looking at a university prospectus and are looking at the qualifications for a particular course, it's important to look at three key areas. The minimum offer entry requirement. This is a course for mechanical engineering at Edinburgh Napier University. The second arrow on this page shows you the minimum offer entry requirement a B and three C's at higher. However, universities receive many applications, not just from Scotland, but across the whole UK and from countries all over the world, and they can choose the best candidates. So the first arrow will tell you the standard entry requirement, that is the qualifications that most students have in trying to get into this course. And in this case, it's three Bs and a C, substantially more than the minimum offer entry requirement. The third arrow will give further information. So here it says you may be given an adjusted offer of entry if you meet a, as our specified minimum entry requirements within our widening participation criteria. There will be more slides later on in this PowerPoint about the wider participating criteria. Many children underestimate the challenges of coming back for fifth year and sixth year. The jump from national five to higher is substantial and pupils only have a few months to achieve this and not the entire calendar year. Many pupils underestimate how much work there is and also the quality of work that they have to produce in order to achieve a higher qualification. And this all happens at the same stage where your child's social life will be developing more fully and where they may have the opportunity to take on a part time job. These are all threats to achieving good qualifications in S5 and S6 and some pupils end the year no better qualified 
than they were at the start. I always refer to S5 as the year of no pain, no gain. It's in the bigger picture, a small chunk of your child's life where they are going to achieve the qualifications needed to impact on the rest of their life. Some pupils from low income families may be entitled to the Educational Maintenance Allowance, the EMA. This is a payment to and for the pupil rather than the parent of £30 approximately per week to help pay for the expenses of attending school, such as food, transport, uniform, stationery. It's means tested and pupils must be age 16. It begins in August 2021 and is paid monthly. Payment is only made if pupils are attending school regularly, are on time, behaving well and working really well. In some cases, pupils attending college may be entitled to the educational maintenance allowance. Moving from S4 to S5 and 6 is a big step in your child becoming an adult. They will need to be supported not just by school, but more importantly by you as a parent or carer in order to do this successfully. The following pages have been put together by your pupil support team. They give information about the coursing process, the supports that are available at college and at university and by Mr Foley, our school's career advisor from SDS. They will also give some information about widening, widening participation schemes for pupils who are care experienced, who come from low income families, who come from families where they are the first in their family to attend tertiary education.
Reach and ACES are University of Edinburgh widening participation projects and they're funded by the Scottish Funding Council. They support eligible pupils from S4 to S6 in state secondary schools across South East Scotland who are interested in pursuing careers in law, medicine and vet medicine, that's the REACH project, or art, design and architecture, is the ACES project. Both projects support pupils through the application process for these subjects. They provide career exploration opportunities to find out more about the subjects and provide one-to-one -one advice and guidance to help pupils achieve their goals. This is all free of charge. You are able to sign up for REACH or ACES if you meet one of the following criteria. If you're care experienced. If you live in an area which has the Scottish index of multiple deprivation, one or two. If you're a young carer, if you're estranged from your family, if you're a refugee or an asylum seeker, or if you're entitled to free school meals. Pupils can sign up using the How Do I Take Part tabs on the following web pages. But please talk to your pupil support leader if you would like help with this. Your Ed further supports widening participation. Your Ed partner school and or pupil, you will take part in activities throughout your school years from S1 to S6. You'll receive information, advice and guidance about higher education and studying at University of Edinburgh. The next few slides give you more information about this programme. Career Ready is a programme which helps raise students' aspirations and bridges a potential gap between education and work by giving them access to real experience and widening opportunities and future networking. It's a two year programme during S5 and S6 and serves students aged 16 to 18. It's a growing movement with schools in Scotland, and it's only possible with employer support. Here are some careers that many students choose to follow. 
and it's important to know what is required for them. Live lessons for preparing for course choice have already started for S4 and will begin for S5 pupils this week, beginning the 1st of March. Pupil support leaders will be interviewing S4 pupils um, from the 1st to the 12th of March online and for S5 pupils from the 15th of March to the 26th of March. They'll continue to post updates on all of the opportunities above to pupils on house teams and advise of pending deadlines. Thank you for your ongoing support and please contact any member of the pupil support team or the senior leadership team if you have any queries. If you need support with your language, please contact the school and we will do our best to help find someone who can translate this for you.